So this video is the first in a series about Java Swing. Swing is a graphical user interface toolkit widget set for Java, which is part of core Java. It's intended to be replaced with Java FX, but Swing is still widely used. Now what Swing is, is a series of widgets that we can use to build a user interface. And the structure of Swing is approximately as shown here. We have Swing components, and the swing components fall into two categories. There's straight components, which are just the individual widgets that we use to build the user interface. And then we have containers. These are components which contain other components. Now I'm going to build a graphical user interface containing one of each of these to see what they look like. So I'm going to start by building a J frame. Now what a J frame is, is it's a window. Um, so it's, it can be the main application window, or you can have multiple windows in your application, but it's what you'll think of as a window. So, uh, the eclipse window, for example, is the main, uh, window that you interact with for eclipse with the close button, the maximize and minimize and the title and, um, yeah, just a typical uh, window that you'll work with. So let's create our J frame. Now I'm going to, for the J frame, I'm going to create it by extending J frame. So I'm going to have a class called my frame, which extends J frame and I'm going to build it from there. So now I'll build it in the constructor method. So in the main method, I just build the J frame in the constructor. I can call methods of J frame and I'm going to set the size of it. Now there's a set size method and I'm going to make it 640 by 400, 640 pixels across 400 pixels down. Now, because I'm actually using a second monitor, I'm going to set the location so that it appears on my second monitor. This is the coordinates across and down from the screen where I want the top left corner of my J frame to be. And it's optional, but I'm going to set title and I'm going to set the title to be J frame. And finally, I'm going to create, make it visible because a J frame by default is not visible. So I'm going to say set visible true. Now I'm going to run this program. And there we have our J frame. It's a window with the title and there's nothing contained in it yet, but it has the maximize and minimize buttons and the close button. When I click the close button, it closes, but it doesn't close my program. I have to click stop to close the program. Okay. So I'm going to work through all of these components and add each one to my J frame to demonstrate it working. Now in a later video, we're going to be looking at how we can lay our components out. But for now, I'm just going to lay the components out in a grid with a very simple layout called grid layout. So to set my J frame into grid layout, I can do set layout and I need to supply a layout object. So I'm going to say new grid layout. I'm going to make my grid five by five. Now, don't worry too much about this because we will be covering layouts in a later video. I'm going to press Control Shift and O just to import the grid layout. Now, when I add a component, it should appear in the top left corner. And as I add components, I'll have five columns and five rows in a grid and each square in that grid will be the same size across and the same size down. So now I'm going to create a label. I was going to say J label, my label equals new J label. And I'm going to give this, I'm going to initialize this with some text. I just did control shift and O to import label and I'm just going to make the text J label and I'm going to add that to my frame. So this add, I'm calling the method in my frame, add my label. 
Now let's have a look at a label. So there we have a label. Now a J label is a, a component in Swing used to display a short string or it can also display an image. It's not intended to be interacted with, with by the user. So in shortly we'll be looking at components that we can click on and we can type into and this sort of thing. The J label is really just a label to, well, to label something on the display. So that's a J label. So the next component I'm going to add is a J button. I'll call it my button and again I'm going to in initialize it with the string that I want to appear on the button so I'll just initialize it with J button and then I'm going to add my button to my frame control shift and O to import J button and then we run and now we have a J button now the button is something that the user can interact with. We can press the button. So if I click on the button, we can see that it changes appearance when it's pressed. And when I take my finger off the mouse button, it goes back to the original. So we can press this button. Now we'll be looking at how we react to this button press in another video. But for now, uh, we can just press the button. Okay, so the next component I'm going to demonstrate is a J text field. So J text field, my text field equals new J text field. And I'm also gonna initialize that with the text that I want to appear in the text field. Import the J text field and add my text field. To the frame. Now here's our J text field. Now we can edit this. This is user editable text, so I can edit the text in the text field. I can disable editing the text field. Uh, I can also disable editing the button by calling a set enabled method. Um, if you want to know exactly what you can do with each of these things, it would be worth looking at the Java doc to see what methods are available. Now the next component that I'll demonstrate is a J password field. My password field, password field, UJ password field. So I'm just going to construct it with the initial string J password field. And then I'm going to add it to the component. Now this is very similar to a J text field, but this time we can't see the text inside it. It appears as um, invisible so we can't see what's being typed in so i'm sure you understand what that is useful for if we're getting a user to enter a password we don't want somebody looking over their shoulder to see what they're typing okay so the next thing i'll demonstrate is a j text area my text area And I'll add that to my frame. And here we have our J text area. You may notice that it's similar to a J text field. 
uh, we can type into it. The difference with this is with a JTEX field, uh, if I'm pressing return there, JTEX field is just one line, so it's suitable for entering um, a one string of text. Whereas a text area, we can type into here on multiple lines. So a JTEXT area is more suitable for a bigger block of text. Now I think this is a good place to demonstrate one of the containers that I wanted to show. Uh, so if I keep pressing return, we've gone off the bottom of the JTEXT area. So the container that I'm going to demonstrate is called a J scroll pane. Now, I'm going to create a J scroll pane. My scroll pane equals new J scroll pane. And the J scroll pane as a parameter can take another component. So I'm going to give it my text area. And then instead of adding the text area to the frame, I'm going to add my scroll pane to the frame. Now the scroll pane has some methods to control exactly what we want it to do, but in its default state, it will add scroll um, widgets to the boat, both the horizontal and the vertical if it's needed. So now I am going to type into this box until I run out of room. And we can see that it's automatically added a scroll pane for us. Similarly, if I were to type off the right hand edge, we get a horizontal scroll bar. So scroll panes are very useful for if you're not sure whether your um, a panel, the container that you're adding is going to be big enough to display all the information that's inside it. Obviously, you don't just want to add, um, you don't want scroll panes everywhere because that will likely annoy the user. But the scroll pane is useful if you don't know if your container is going to fit. Now, the next thing to demonstrate another simple um, widget is a J checkbox. New J checkbox. Now I initialize that with a string as well, and I'll add it to my frame. And now you'll notice that because we've gone over the five, um, oh, there's now six components added to the frame and we went into grid layout uh, five by five. So it's actually added another column because we've gone over five. So now I have a J checkbox. I can interact with this. I can switch it on and switch it off. So this is really good for a Boolean value where we want the user to input either a yes or no or on or off. We can just switch this on and off. Uh, the next component I'm going to demonstrate is a J radio button. I'm going to call it my radio button one because I'm going to add another in a moment. A radio button is very similar to a checkbox, uh, but this time it's circular instead of square. So the checkbox, we tick it on and off. The radio button, we tick it on and off like that. 
Now the difference is uh, radio buttons are designed to enter one of a number of different values rather than a boolean. So what I mean by that is if I make another radio button my radio button 2 Now these are two independent radio buttons at the moment, but if I say add a button group, I'll just call it button group. What I can do is to the button group, I can add all of the radio buttons that I want grouped together. And then my radio buttons will interact with each other and I can select radio button one. If I now select radio button two, it switches off one. So radio buttons are used when you have a series of different values. Uh, maybe you want to select male or female, or maybe you want to any any input value where you want to select from a specific number of values but you don't want a boolean on or off now i'm going to demonstrate another component uh, just a j panel uh, another container just a j panel so a j panel and i'm going to call this my radio button Panel. Now what a J panel is, is if we just want to create another container within a container um, because we want to lay things out slightly differently, it's particularly useful when working with layouts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my radio buttons instead of adding them using the add method in frame these two calls here are where I add my radio buttons to the frame I'm going to add them to my radio button panel so I'm going to say my radio button panel add radio button 1 and 2 and then I'm going to add my radio button panel to my frame so that means that although we're in grid layout and each uh, each component that I'm adding to my frame is the same size. Now we can see that the radio buttons have been added into one cell of the grid. So they're now taking up the same, both of them together are taking up the same amount of space as all my other components. So a panel is very useful for laying out and one thing which I think is there's a lot of different methods that you can use and I would recommend reading through the Java doc to see what you can do to all of these components. But one uh, component that I what one method that I particularly like in panel my radio button panel is set border. And we can add different types of border. But if we say new titled border we can put in some text around the panel. So I'm going to say my radio button panel. And then when we run, we can see that we've got a border around our panel and it says the text that we want for the title of the panel. So it's optional whether you use this, but I think it looks particularly good. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to make is a list. Now a list has a generic type, uh, but for now keeping things simple, I'm just going to use a string array. So I'm going to make a list of items. 
So I'm going to say string array my list items equals new string array. And I'm going to say list item one, list item two, list item three. And then I'm going to say J list with the generic type string my list equals new J list generic type string and it takes the list items as its constructor. Now a J list can have any generic type. What will appear in the list is what you get by calling the two string method of whatever type of object you've got as the generic type for the list. So, but because I'm just using string, we're just going to see list item one, two, and three. So now I'm going to add my list and let's take a look at how that looks. So here we have a list with list item one, two, and three, and I can select the list items. So this is, um, somewhat similar in function to the radio buttons where we can select an item but we can actually use generic types in there so we can get the user to select a object okay so the next item i'm going to look at is a combo box which is similar to a list um, so i'm going to make another list another my combo items and I'm going to call them combo item one combo item two and combo item three and then J combo box and this also has a generic type so it can act in very similar way to the list so let's have a look at how this looks so here's a combo box we have a drop down uh, value here when we click on it we can select from the items now with a list you can select using shift or control more than one item in the list obviously with a combo box you can only select one so you might want to use a list or a combo box depending on whether you want to be able to select more than one Okay, so the next item I'm going to demonstrate is a J slider. Um, my slider, new J slider. Um, we initialize this with the a minimum value. So I'm going to say the minimum value is zero, a maximum value 100, and a start value. So I'm going to say 30. So what a J slider is, it's for inputting a number. Um, add my slider. It's for inputting a number so we can see, here's a J slider so we can, it's set 30% of the way along. When it's down here, the number in J slider is zero. When it's up there, the number is 100. And we started off with it set at 30. Uh, obviously you might want to add a label or something so the user can see what number he's selecting or maybe it's just an approximate value or maybe we're using it to zoom in and out of something or uh, many different reasons that we might want to enter a number. Now the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is a little bit more complicated and this is a tree. So a tree, we have to create tree nodes. So I'm going to, and a tree node object is a default mutable tree node. I'll call my first one tree root. And I'm going to 
gonna call this tree root. And I'm gonna create more of these nodes. I'm gonna create two branches and a leaf. tree root I'm going to add tree branch one and tree branch two and tree branch two I'm going to add tree leaf and then I'm going to say J tree my tree new J tree and I'm going to give it the tree root in its constructor. So let's have a look at what we have here. So now we have a tree, which is a structured object like a tree where we have the root and then we have branch one, branch two, and in branch two, we had the leaf. So you can imagine this is going to be good for inputting um, data from a structured set, which is structured in this way with a root and branches. We can add more branches to the branches. We can go as deep as we like, and we can add multiple leaves, leaf nodes to the branches. So we can structure this however we like. Now with the, the J text error, I added the scroll pane. Uh, this tree is probably a good candidate for having another scroll pane, especially on this window because it's running out of room already, but I won't bother doing that, but it would work if I wanted to. Now the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is a table. So I'm going to make a string, a 2D string array, table data. And I'm going to make it with strings. And I'm going to put one, two, three in the first row of the table, four, five, six in the second row of the table and J table, my table. I'm also going to make another string array, the table headings. This is a 1D string array, column 1, column 2, and column 3. And add my table. Now, uh, J tables do get really very complicated with an underlying model, and um, it can be quite complicated. But what we have here is a table of numbers that I've added one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got two rows, three columns, and there's our table. I'm just going to make a J tab pane. This is another type of container. My tab pane. And with the J tab pane, we can add tabs. My tab pane, add tab, give it a title, tab one. And then we can have another component or a container inside it. So we could add another panel, but for now, I'm just going to add a J label, label one. And then I add another tab, give it a title, tab two, 
and in there label to and there we have a tab pane label 2 in tab 2 label 1 in tab 1 and you can imagine this could be bigger it could be the whole screen and we could have panels in there so that's a nice way to structure panels another one is a J split pane And that takes either horizontal or vertical split as a parameter. Does it take the le the two components as a, in its constructor? Yes. So we can also specify two components. So again, I'm going to add new J labels. I'm going to call it. I'll say split. Table one and split label two and I'll add that to the frame and this gives us a two uh, components or containers split in two with a horizontal split and the user can resize this split so you've probably seen that sort of thing before so that's a demonstration of a whole bunch of swing components so we've been through many of the components the label the button the text fields and the different things that we can use to either decorate the frame like a label or get user input like a button press or some text input or checkbox and then we've got the containers the frame itself which is the window where we've been adding things we can have panels where like the where we added the radio buttons split panes tab panes and uh, various different elements that we can use to build a user interface so that's uh, what i wanted to show you for now in the next video we'll have a look at how we can lay these components out in a more sensible way so thanks for watching